Hello and welcome to this edition of Quality of Life. I'm your host, Dave Augustine. Today we're going to be talking about substance abuse as substance abuse is an ongoing, growing challenge for our communities nowadays. Joining us today to talk about substance abuse is Kent Cully Coleth from Samaritan's Hand. Cully, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dave. Honor to have you here, especially with you know today's growing concerns, problems, and epidemic of substance abuse. Yes, sir. So, Cully, could you give us a background of yourself as far as you know? How did you get involved in the substance abuse you know fight, for lack of a better word, in your background? Yeah, Dave. Um, it's been a personal uh, struggle for me. Um, I've been in the recovery in and out the recovery community for. Um, about 40 years myself, and uh, going through a lot of different uh, organizations and different uh, treatments and correctional things and whatever, once I uh, dealt with my own issues, then uh, I started to go to school, uh, received an associate's degree in substance abuse counseling, uh, pursued a bachelor's degree in human services, and uh, went into a, a drug and alcohol counseling profession. I worked in Milwaukee County for uh, quite a few years, Washington County and Sheboygan County in various levels of uh, treatment. I was in hospital settings, inpatient, outpatient, uh, private sectors, correctional sectors, and uh, just continued to try to find out uh, what was working and the best approaches. And uh, with my own personal um, experiences and my professional um, training and education and stuff, I tried to roll that all together to try to uh, get together some information collectively that could uh, help other people. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, Samaritan's Hand, that is a faith-based uh, substance abuse program or facility. Are there many faith, faith, excuse me, faith-based substance abuse programs around or are you kind of unique on that? Yeah, Dave, we are kind of unique on that. That's a good question. Uh, there uh, might be a few other around the country, but it's very limited. In Sheboygan County, we're the only ones that we know of and you know, even quite beyond. Um, and the faith-based part is uh, more of a, a way of life mm -hmm. instead of uh, a different like approach. The recovery uh, part of it, it's not religion, it's not denominational, it's more of some uh, life choices and yep. things like that. But yeah, we uh, designed our own program and uh, there, uh, there isn't anything like us in the area. Wow, that's fantastic. Could you go into a little bit on what the program entails and what Samaritan's Hand is all about? Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, Samaritan's Hand, we, uh, or I founded it in uh, 2011 and uh, it was real small and it's grown in the last uh, five and a half years of existence. And we have uh, clinical uh, individual counseling. We have uh, group counseling. We have uh, AODA support meetings. We have Bible studies, a mentorship program. We do uh, some service work for the community. And uh, we try to um, teach our people uh, other ways of life as far as, you know, they need to work, they need to be a productive member of the community, um, they need to support their families and just try to teach them uh, basically like some Christian values as far as the faith-based um, component goes. Nice. And with the faith-based component, you know, I like what you said, it's not denominational or anything. And I think with the center of quality of life on one, I think one's happiness starts with their spirituality and belief or faith in something you know and i think that's where really the core starts yes so correct so, yeah uh, in the counties that you've worked in or the demographics let's just say in wisconsin how would you rate or measure sheboygan county's you know, substance abuse problems compared to others i would say uh, sheboygan county per population it's second to none in our state and that's uh Substance abuse in general, I guess if you would try to um, narrow it down to some type of statistics that somebody had of one drug versus the other, somebody else, you know, might mm -hmm. overlap there or out, you know, out beat us there. But as far as substance abuse in general, um, we're probably leading uh, per capital and uh, per population. One of those things is 
uh, when we talk about substance abuse, most people think of like the heroin epidemic mm -hmm. and a lot of the pharmaceutical problems and things like that. But a huge part of our culture here in Sheboygan County is the is alcohol. alcohol. And that's definitely one of the um, substances of abuse that we deal with on a daily basis that but still is very dangerous and still causes mm -hmm. our our community as well as the state and the country uh, a lot of other uh, problems. Yeah. Well, alcohol, that's probably from, you know, in this area, pretty much German descent in this area, you know, as far as Sheboygan, a lot of it was German descent. And, you know, you see the Germans or whatever, you know, Oktoberfest, beer, you know, everything, brats, you know, yes, the sir. whole thing. So um, what are the main substances that are abused nowadays? Like you said, and we'll get to heroin, but, you know, what are the substances that you see real huge issues with? Um, Again, one of our main ones is alcohol. Um, I would say that we have, um, the majority have an alcohol problem that people we see, even if that's not their main problem. Many of them, it is their main problem, but um, alcohol, one, being legal and uh, being readily available. Like you said, it's definitely part of our culture here and um, it's really socially accepted. And uh, people just think that they can, uh, excuse people's drinking if somebody mm -hmm. smells bad at work or you know said something yeah. wrong or you know maybe they did something well under the influence of alcohol that that's an excuse because they were under the influence of alcohol so um alcohol is the number one that we see um, bar none but there's a lot of uh, pharmaceutical abuse um and a lot of that of course was the opiate painkillers mm -hmm. But like you said, we, we can touch on that a little later. But um, even like some of the psychotropic medications or any of the other medications that uh, can line of abuse like the amphetamines or other things, uh, if people, or even if it's their prescription, they're prescribed their medication, they might abuse it or they might uh, get it from friends, family, or wherever they can. But mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals and then even the illicit street drugs, if it's crack cocaine, methamphetamine, cocaine, uh, you know, things like that, sure. ecstasy, that's still all out there too, but it just doesn't get the uh, publicity that some of the mm -hmm. other ones do, yeah. like heroin. I know you mentioned, you know, alcohol abuse. And I think, you know, from what you were saying, that's one of the reasons why Sheboygan County is one of the highest things is alcohol abuse because, you know, growing up or when you think about substance abuse, you think about the hard drugs, the narcotics, the stuff out in the street. You really don't think of alcohol once in a while or other things like that or prescription drug, you know, back that, back you know, a while there wasn't really an issue with that. It's just a lot of this stuff is now recent or being recognized and we're actually doing something about it. Correct. So... Uh, as far as alcohol, have we made any progress as far as, you know, the, the abusiveness? I think the best progress we're making in Sheboygan, and I'm proud of this community, and some of the agencies as well as Samaritan's Hand and our county and law enforcement and others is the uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. We definitely need awareness. And uh, people uh, mistake, Dave, a lot of uh, um, alcohol abuse of if you're just drink too much, it doesn't mean that you're falling down. It doesn't mean you ended up in jail or mm. you've gotten a number of drunk drivings or other things. You can uh, abuse alcohol and not have like legal consequences sure. or other things. So it's the awareness. And then the one thing is in our homes and in our culture, we're exposing our children and our uh, community to things like this, and then they think it's socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. So the awareness that they're doing in schools, that they're doing uh, on a county level, a law enforcement level, a lot of the other agencies or human services or us, is getting out there and even just having the awareness that you know mm -hmm. we really need to be on guard of our alcohol use. And even though it was cultural and socially acceptable, we need to you know be on guard for our families and our community that it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah. When I, growing up, high school or whatever, you know, the biggest thing was alcohol back then, you know, yes. growing up and everything. And now it seems like the tables have turned to more drug use than alcohol. Do you have any ideas of why that may have happened and occurred? Um, I would say that, you know, there are still a number of uh, high school kids, of course, that are always going to drink and they have the parties Absolutely. and whatever. But I think a, a growing number is because of the... Um, the how they how easily they can get the drugs mm -hmm. you know um before the the drugs probably weren't available 
And now in a society where if you're not feeling well, if you're anxious, depressed, if you can't sleep, um, if you have pain, if you whatever, there's so many pharmaceutical drugs out there that the kids are learning of now. They're growing up in a house that's one, you know, uh, one step short of a pharmacy. Right. So now the, the things are so readily available that like you said years ago, there was no way that you could get your hands on right. them or maybe they didn't even exist or on a very low level. But now like these farm parties, the kids bring all these different pharmaceuticals and they mix them together and they share and they trade and they do all different things. It's because it is so readily available yeah. in our culture. I see that point because back then it was the parents' liquor cabinet, now it's the medicine cabinet. Yes, yes, sir. And probably the effects of the pharmaceutical drugs, let's say, probably gives them a quicker buzz and, a, and probably more of a high, and it's probably easier to come down, you know, the first few times without the so-called hangover, so to speak. Correct, and it's, I mean, a lot easier to put two pills in your pocket than a, a bottle of whiskey, right. and uh, you can't smell it on kids, right. and if they say they're tired or they might not feel well, mm -hmm. it's a lot different than being stumbling drunk at school or smelling like, you know, alcohol or having this uh, bottle of vodka in your backpack right. and whatever, so uh, the pharmaceuticals are definitely a challenge for our youth. Definitely. Heroin. That seems to be, or has boiled up to the top of the popularity, attention type abuse today. Any reason why that is? Yeah, Dave, uh, definitely it's boiled to the top of, uh, of the abuse. Um, of course, it started back uh, medications again, medical mm -hmm. field, uh, pharmaceuticals, it always der derived from the opiate pain medications. We've tracked that back for a long time, but uh, that's where a lot of them got started. But Two things is heroin is so readily available now and it's so cheap. A lot of people don't even that were getting hooked on heroin that had started on the um, narcotic pain medications or whatever. They're even surpassing the medications and just going right to heroin because it is so cheap and it's so, uh, it's so easy to get. And another one is where why heroin, it's always the buzzword and people talk about it is because of the deaths. Most of the other, uh, if it's the benzodiazepines or the amphetamines or even alcohol or other things, um, the deaths don't nearly total what the um, heroin deaths do, but that's because the heroin, you really don't know what you're getting. It's uncontrolled, like the pharmaceuticals, you know what's there, the alcohol, you know much, how much you consumed. Heroin, you never know what it's cut with. You might get some bad stuff, like with, when they're cutting it with fentanyl and a lot of the other things on the street these days. and. Uh, and then even um, a lot of the kids are using the, they're turning to the IV drug use for mm -hmm. the heroin and uh, they really don't know what they're doing. And uh, one, you know, their first experiment, like when they first drank or did pills sure. or whatever, it might've worked out good or not good, they got sick, this might kill them. Right, that's kind of scary, you know, along that line. And, you know, it kind of comes into, like you had said before, you know, involvement with the police agencies, law enforcement, you know, social services, organizations like yourself, I think, have to work together because this isn't really a so-called criminal way to treat things to make it better. It's kind of like an epidemic or a disease that we have to work together and, you know, what can we do to cure it is what we got to do. And I think our police chief, Chris Domogolsky, you know, summed it up real well, you know, when I heard him at the heroin in Wisconsin thing. You know, the, the traditional, you know, throwing them in jail or punish them isn't working, you know. I agree with that. So. And like you said, up in Green Bay, uh, Chief Demogowski, yes, I agree with him 100%. We work well together. I try to work with law enforcement the mm -hmm. best we can. And there, we all know, um, even with Sheriff Preby and other law enforcement, uh, we're not going to arrest our way out of this program. Right. And like you said, the quality of life, I love the name of the mm -hmm. program, Thank Dave, you. is uh, we're just looking for a better quality of life of the individuals, the families, our community as a whole. And uh, it isn't a law enforcement problem. It's not a, a human services problem. It's not a political problem. It's a community problem. Right. The community is the ones that deteriorated and, and that's how the problem came in. And it's gonna take the full community at large, working together, all the, all the associations, all the agencies, every profession and even the family members themselves um, are all gonna have to fight this epidemic, epidemic on the front lines to even get this under control. Yeah. You know, you mentioned community. 
Um, what demographics do you see? Is there a commonality or is it all over the board as far as where substance abuse occurs? Is it in the you know, age groups? Is it economic? Is it you know, just well-being? I guess, where, where do you see substance abuse is really hitting our community? Very good question, Dave. Um, at Samaritan's Hand, we only deal with adult, the adult population, 18 and over. Mm -hmm. We know that it hits, the, um, it hits the schools and the youth pretty hard. But um, as far as demographics, um, of course, one thing that we know is if there's been a family that's had a history of abuse, if there's been um, abuse, uh, drug dependencies, or t different types of alcohol or drug abuse by one of the um, parents or both of the parents or somewhere in there, that their potential from the children or the other members of the family are much higher. But any social, economic, uh, race, uh, ethnicities, genders, uh, age, it's pretty much all over the board. And just uh, as we see some of the guys that have been in... Uh, uh, prison for drug problems, selling drugs, using drugs, or other things. We've seen like uh, legitimate, uh, you know, we'll call productive members of our community that are having problems as well. He might have hurt his back at work. All of a sudden, uh, he got some pain medication, or a mother that was lifting laundry or the children or something. And now we're seeing just our regular neighbors, our family members, and whatever that now are in this struggle um, with the. Addiction, pay, addictive pain medications, or even these things where they get hooked on pharmaceuticals. Maybe they needed them for a while. Um, they went through a tough time, a death mm -hmm. or a divorce or whatever, and they were using some type of prescription drugs, but now they're um, abusing them. You know, they were there for a time period, but of course goes back to the alcohol, our coping mechanisms, our stressors, our other things, and people need to find different ways to deal with things than using drugs or alcohol as the answer to anything. So to answer your question, it's really all over the map, Dave. It's mm -hmm. a complete problem. Really, so it's not targeted on one certain area. You know, with that being the case and awareness, um, care for our community, care for our friends, care for our family, you know, if somebody does have a substance abuse problem. What are some of the warning signs or some of the symptoms that you may see that may indicate there may be a problem, not necessarily that there is, but you know that there could be a problem? There's always definitely con some concerns when the people, when their behavior changes. If they're usually involved in a lot of things, they're outgoing, um, or even if they were quiet and now they're outgoing, but when their behavior changes, a lot of what you see is if they were involved in the family, like say uh, family activities, if there was holidays that they used to attend all the time, or they'd come for uh, lunch uh, at mom's house on Saturdays or whatever else, people start missing things. They start uh, making excuses, maybe a shortage of funds when they start asking, hey dad, can I have 50 bucks? Or when the things aren't getting paid. Another one is maybe even their appearance. Now all of a sudden they might look uh, you know, paler, or they might look like they're, there's a loss of weight, or they're not keeping themselves as well. So it could be financial, it could be their behavior, either showing up places or not showing up places. Maybe the people they're around, like how come you haven't been around those friends and mm -hmm. you're around these? Or uh, like, um, like I said, their appearance. Um, a lot of times if things are going, uh, or turning differently, things might not be going well. And the best thing is someone can do is if that's your loved one or your friend or you care about them or a coworker, ask the hard questions. Mm -hmm. Ask them, hey Dave, what's going on? Um, you know, I noticed that you've been late for work a number of times. I noticed that your, your brother, I noticed you haven't been to mom's for lunch on Saturdays anymore. What's going on? And uh, that's where the community part comes in as far as uh, we need to ask uh, the people the hard questions instead of everybody ignoring everything and keeping to themselves. Okay. Again, coming back to community, you know, community well-being and our quality of life, what toll have you seen, you know, substance abuse taking on our communities? You know, how are, how are our communities being affected? Wow, Dave, uh, another great question. Thank you. As, uh, it's uh, Sheboygan. I grew up here, like I said, uh, and uh, it has affected our community. Our community is not even the same. Uh, we can really um, uh, dig into that when we talk to the guys that work at the detention center, our jail and detention center are so overcrowded 
they can't fit enough guys in there or and girls and, mm. and even the juveniles. Sure. So that's just one part, but that's one thing that says it 10 years ago, I mean, there wasn't nearly that problem. And now, um, and if it might, people say it might not be all drug related. Well, if it's domestic violence or if it's uh, stealing or whatever else, a lot of that goes back to either they were drunk or they're stealing for habits or whatever. So a lot of it is um, substance abuse related. And going on top of that, if we have to hire more uh, people for the drug unit, we have to spend more money on, um, on the jails, even like free and reduced lunches. If the parents aren't paying for their kids' um, lunches and they're, uh, they're not working and the, the different types of uh, community things that we're giving, our tax money's going instead of to these roads or to education or other things, this, uh, this hits our whole community at large. And a lot of people will say, well, my family's not affected or we're, you know, we don't have any problem or any part of that. This affects everyone on a very large scale. With that being said, do we have the tools available to us, the resources? Are our communities equipped to take on and handle this issue? Straight out, no. The answer is a hard and fast no, Dave. But the thing is, um, we can't use as, as an excuse not to move forward. What we need to do is we need to get more um, people, like you said, an mm -hmm. epidemic in this fight. We need to get more people in the battle. The people that want to volunteer somewhere, wherever it is, if you have family members, get your family members to help. The, the corporations or the companies or even some of the um, families that are able, they should uh, be getting involved and they should sponsor some type of drug and alcohol help. They should be helping agencies. They should be sponsoring and donations and other people, if they don't have money, they can be holding events mm -hmm. or even awareness or they can have, uh, you know, meetings and they can, you know, the whole community at large mm -hmm. can all pitch in and then that's where we're going to be able to make a difference because right now it's uh, we just don't have the hands, we don't have the resources to even touch this, but I believe they're out there if the people will just step up, which I believe that our community can do. Right. Where would one go if they want to start to, let's say, volunteer, or if I'm an organization where I want to help, I mean, we need funds to do it, or I'm a healthcare institution, you know, with the education and everything, you know, where, how does it all come together? Where can these organizations or people go? Well, I would, of course, I'm going to put some Aaron's hand in there. They can email us, they can uh, go to our website, they can call our office. We always need volunteers, of course. Um, we can only help as many people that we can afford to help. We right. we're solely raise our own money. We're a small 5013C, but the more money and the more people or more resources we have, the more people we can help. This isn't a get rich quick scheme. We were, uh, you know, we made the corporation and we have our organization to help individuals, mm -hmm. families, and the community. That's what it's about. You can also, I'm sure, contact the law enforcement agencies. Like they have the drug take back days. Mm -hmm. They have the, they just had the um, night out on crime where they have it in the parks and they have the walks. And we had the prayer at the pump over on, uh, by Fountain Park, sure. by uh, Ninth and Erie at uh, Hire's uh, BP station. And just uh, different awarenesses, even schools, maybe they wanna do some awareness at schools, but you start to, uh, contact any you know different agencies and uh, they can point you in the right direction human services but there's probably so many uh, love inc there's probably so many agencies that would love to get phone calls of mm -hmm. you know what we can only give this much or i only right. have this much time but we would love to get in this battle against this uh, fight against mm -hmm. drug and alcohol um in drugs and alcohol in our yep. community and um I'm, there's probably endless places to sure. serve sure and it comes down to, you know, to take this on, you need unity. And in my mind, unity, that means community. Yes. You know, and I think some other areas where it could help is you start to see more neighborhood associations being formed. Yes. You know, as far as that goes, which can help in the, you know, battle too. And it's, I think it's just meant more to help people, not to tattle on them or, you know, send them away to prison or anything like that. I think it's more of a education is where it starts. And it might even be, you know, with prescriptions, because I know one time I had a, really bad cough. So the 
to, I went to the doctor because I couldn't stop coughing, so he gave me a prescription for cough medicine. I'm going, cough medicine? Okay. Didn't even look at the label. I just took some, and I thought, well, I'll take some NyQuil <laughs> to make me drowsy so I can sleep because I wasn't sleeping. Well, the next thing you know, my wife came home. She said I was snoring, talking to her, sleeping, and watching TV all at the same time, and I didn't know which way was what. Just to give you what two little simple things did, you know, and these are over-the-counter things of how it can affect somebody. Right. Yes. So, you know, education is a big thing, you know, along then with the backup of the programs and other services to help, you know, do all this. Right. And as you said, Dave, this isn't about um, telling on somebody or getting right. people in trouble. We call it responsible living. Because if I know that you're using substances, the thing is, if I um, tell somebody you want to get you help, um, one, it means I care about you enough if you live mm -hmm. or die or for your family. And that's the other thing is um, if we don't help the people, all of a sudden we're going to wish they did because then they, we might be reading on them about them on page two going to their funeral if somebody didn't say anything. Yep. And the responsible living is if these people aren't, um, you know, like addressed, they could be selling drugs to our kids, your kids, your grandkids. Um, they could, you know, drunk driving accidents. What about they go to one of these uh, employers? The employers go, mm -hmm. oh, we don't, what? he goes impaired, he goes into work or whatever and does something. Yeah, maybe because he was under the influence, but it's still not gonna do very yeah. well for the employees or the, um, or the business or whatever else. So the responsible living of confronting people and uh, like you said, asking, seeing where people need help. And at Samaritan's Hand, yeah, we'd love to help the people. We know that we're not the cure. We're not the um, you know, one and only. Uh, if people don't like our approach, the faith-based approach, I say, well, get help somewhere. Yep. And if you don't get help from us or get help wherever else, and you go somewhere and you don't like the way they do it, or you don't like me, or you don't like whatever else, go somewhere else. But what I always say is go somewhere, get yep. the help you need, get your loved ones the help you need, because something's gonna work. If something continues to not work, the motivation for the per person that has the issue, they might not be motivated for mm -hmm. the help. It just might be excuses. That's what we find most of the time. But um, just keep looking around. There's yep. all different uh, types of agencies and treatments and um, if you don't have uh, even money for that, I mean, we'll, we'll help you, you sure. know, with no money at all. Sure. And I think, you know, right now it looks like this huge tidal wave coming at us, you know, of this problem in number one. You know, we have to look at, you know, getting over the tidal wave that we can handle that initial surge, but then also to go on to continue, you know, the thing as well. So, um, Cully? Thank you very much for being on the show. I think this was a great show, very informative. Um, for quality of life, um, and on behalf of Cully from Samaritan's Hand, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Dave. Um, any other questions about the show or other topics, you can email us at wscssheboygan.gov. For quality of life, I'm Dave Augustine. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.